Dear students, in this module, I will continue on elaborating the course contents for this course. In this module, I will tell you about the topics that we will be studying towards protein sequence and structure analysis. So let's take a look at the chapter protein sequences. In this chapter, we will begin by looking at the DNA and RNA sequences and their conversion into proteins, the coding of amino acids and how open reading frames can be useful. Sequencing of proteins will then be looked at. Applications of mass spectrometry in sequences will be specifically evaluated. This will be followed up by the two protocols, bottom-up proteomics and top-down proteomics. And we'll see how protein ionization techniques can be useful in performing these two protocols. Then we will begin with the data processing and we'll start with MS1 and estimation of the intact protein mass. We will see how to score this intact protein mass and then protein fragmentation towards tandem MS. We'll calculate the experimental and theoretical molecular weight of proteins and peptides and then we'll calculate the peptide sequence tags. We'll score them and then we'll do the in silico protein fragmentation and scoring as well as comparison. All of this will be followed up by protein sequence database search and large scale proteomics. I will introduce you a couple of data file formats such as the RAW and MGF format and I'll talk about the online proteomics tools such as Mascot and ProSite PTM. An example case study will also be presented at the end of this chapter. In this chapter, we'll talk about the protein structures. We'll look at the specific properties of amino acids and their structural traits. This will be followed up by their folding and the process of folding. We'll also consider several models and the resulting protein structures. Specifically, we'll see the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures and their folding. Next, we'll see the bond angles that are there within the completely folded proteins and we'll see how Ramachandran plot is helpful in that. This will be followed by structural visualization and we'll also see how we can determine the protein structure using experimental methods. Then we'll move to the protein data bank or PDB and see how the experimental structures and the predicted structures can be stored online in databases. We'll see several online resources for protein visualization and then we'll start on the calculation of energy for the protein structures. After calculating the energies of protein structures, we'll see how structure determination can be done by looking at these energy levels. The protein structures such as alpha helices, beta sheets, loops and coils will be defined for you and we'll see how they come together towards creating motifs and domains. We'll also look at the classification databases and algorithms that are there for classifying the proteins into these classifications. Next, we'll move to online tools and resources towards structure comparison. Since structure comparison is a very complex topic, so these tools will be very useful to you. Up next will be protein structure prediction. So sometimes we don't know the structures of proteins, so we'll look at how we can fold a protein sequence into its structure. And we'll do this by first predicting the secondary structures within the proteins. chow fassman algorithm will be introduced at this point, which is the seminal algorithm for predicting the folded proteins. In conclusion, the protein sequences and structures will be dealt with within these two chapters. In the follow-up module, I'll talk about the homology modeling as well as systems biology topics that will be done in this course.